Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Richard for Welsh Tech, and today we have a brand new product from Gamdias. Or Gamdias. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but it is the Aurora GL360 LCD AIO. Should you buy it? Okay then, so this is the Aurora GL360 LCD from Gamdias. We're going to unbox this, give you the specs now, and then we'll test it on the test bench. So let's get this off first, and I'll be back. Okay, so now I've taken the wrapping off now. Let's get this out of the box. Oh, it's packaged. Wow, that's weird. That's weirdly packed, that is. Wow. Okay, so we're greeted with this box for you. There's yeah, going to be the accessories. A little bit excessive when it comes to, like, the packaging, but... Type C, that's a very extremely short cable. That would be for the screen. And of course, it does support AMD, Intel, and does come with Home Face, so that's it for the accessories. But there, and of course, and it does come with this bit here. This is the Aurora GL LCD. So this just gives you uh, an indicator what brackets there. It even shows how to install the AIO itself, the fans, apply thermal paste, do that. Now, something that really did come out to me is the size on that. Look at the size of that. That's a huge screen. But let's see how this comes out, is it? I'm guessing like this. Okay, so Aha, lift and pull. There we go, fantastic. Right. Okay, so let's get this box out of the way. Okay, so let's get this out. Now, I will say this is an absolute huge screen. It is huge. Just look at the size on that bad boy. Does this come off? No, it does not. Okay. So, that is an absolutely huge display. Ah, oh, it's a three pin for the... Right, Gamdias, I'm... It's 2025. We shouldn't be having a pump header with a three pin. We should be on four pin PWM. The fans are standard ARGB and 4-pin PWM, which is a good thing. Otherwise, I would have been going absolutely insane. Wow, that is extremely light. Okay. So, the radio doesn't have anything. It doesn't even have the Gam DS uh, embossed logos, nothing. It's just the fans, the Aurora fans. So, I guess let's get through to the specs, shall we? Okay, so when it comes to the spe uh, specifications for the cooler, now the radiate dimensions are 396 by 120 by 27. The pump speed of the pump is 2700 RPM with a three pin connector, which I'm absolutely gutted about. Get rid of three pins, put four pin PWM on your, A uh, on your AIOs. The, uh, it's a copper base plate, but there's copper. Uh, it's an aluminium radiator, rated volt is 12 volt pump. The compatibility is LGA 1851, 18, uh, 1700, 1150, 1150, 1155, 1156, 1200, AM4, AM5, and AM3. Wow. And then when it comes to the fans, they are 120 by 120 by 25 standard fan. They range between 800 and 2000 RPM with a 65.71 CFM of ooh, airflow. The air pressure is 2.21 h uh, millimeter h2o with a noise level of three uh, 33 decibels and they do have a, a hydraulic bearing and the fans are rated for uh, five uh, 12 volts and five volt led okay so the screen it seems to be four inches that's what it says here and that is pretty much it for yeah it's a four inch customizable uh, LCD the screen patented cooling design. That's all it says about the screen. So yeah, that that's all it says about the screen. So let's get this installed because this one's gonna be. I mean, just look at the size; it's absolutely huge. So let's get this installed and see how it is, shall we? Okay, so this is the Aurora 360 LCD installation. So as for the A, this is specifically for AM5. These are the brackets you need. They go this like that on the side. And they will just go into these grooves that are already done on the plastic and clip. And you go like that. 
And that's pretty much it for that. Now, as for standoff installation. So, like I said, this is specific for AM5, so it is these standoffs here. There's only one way it goes in, and that is that way, because that's the correct thread for the AM5 black, uh, back plate or AM4, because these are backwards compatible with both platforms. So you want to just tighten one and then continue. Okay, with that done now, it's thermal paste time. Okay, so this is the thermal paste I'm using for, specifically, this is the thermal paste I use for all AM uh, D uh, cooler, like reveals and stuff with AIOs and CPU coolers. So place the thermal paste like that, and that's plenty over there. Now, I'll show you how to do the block. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you've got it situated at the correct angle. Now, it's only going to go one way, go down like this on the standoffs, and then press. That's just to get the thermal paste done. Then you want to grab these, which are these little screws. Now, what you want to do is do one thread at a time. That's what I would suggest. One below. Now, as for when it comes to the overall pressure, what we really want to do is get a long screwdriver. Right, so like I said, you need to screw one side first. And then you want to do it in a crisscross pattern like this. So that side. Then you want to do that side, because what this will essentially do is uh, even the pressure and it will also even the spread of the thermal paste. So you want to do it like that. Then you want to go back to that one, that one. Then go back to that one. And basically until they all thread down. Now, obviously, it's going to be the dependent don't go over tightening it because you don't want to damage anything but and that's it essentially for it to be installed now i'm going to show you where the type c connect actually plugs into okay so this is the cable that actually attaches to type c now this is a usb 2 cable it will only go to one of these headers on your motherboard which will be by there now it will be actually labeled USB header. So this one by here specifically is actually USB 2 and it says it on there. Now it uh, just make sure you connect it into one of these headers like this. Once it's down, situated, and then I'll show you to do the rest. And then of course, and as long as you've uh, actually cabled it correctly, this should come outside. This is what the Type-C connector looks like and it will go right by here, in between by here. Click it in and that's it pretty much. And the RGB is exactly the same thing. It'll take an ARGB header, which I will show you right now. Okay, so that is an ARGB header right below there. That's where the, for the lighting control on your motherboard is. Now, as for the CPU is by here, right there. That is for your CPU. That one specifically in the bag. Now, obviously, it's going to be dependent on what the motherboard layer is. But that CPU, you'll have a fan header or a header on the motherboard stated cpu and then you'll have another one then right by here which will have a pump that's where the pump goes this is the gam diaz aurora 360 lcd fans at 50 percent band speed very quiet at 50 percent now same thing but 100 percent fan speed they are loud but at a certain distance, you wouldn't hear them. Okay, so this is the uh, Az Azus Cast software. So you can adjust everything from, you can go to one block, which will just display whatever the temperature is. You can go to two blocks, which will be able to, you will be able to put up the GPU load or the CPU. You can put three blocks where you can have the time, the date, the load, the CPU frequency. Then you've got a clock by here, which is by there. You've got a calendar. You've got a gallery, which you can add your own pictures to. 
Then you've got notes, same way you can write a note and actually write it there, which is quite handy actually. So if we go back to three notes now, you can change the background. The background does have a uh, number of video types, which you can click or you can actually upload your own, but it is quite quick when it comes to the <clears throat> responsiveness. They've got a number of default stuff, but this does support JPEG, PNG, B mp gifs mp4s and the max file size is 25 megabytes now the video length should not exceed 30 seconds but you can go to uh, advanced which will change it to c there you can rotate it you've got the brightness control and pretty much that's it really but you can go through a lot of the different settings now you can change that put that to and it should just load up gpu temp uh gpu utilization you can go to cpu utilization and then it'll just change you can go to gpu temperature go to cpu temp temperature it's quite easy to thing you can you can't really move things around but when it comes to like the images and stuff you can just change the background to a basic image Personally, I prefer this one with the moon because it's quite nice. You can change the uh, color of the fonts. You can't really change the font itself. I don't know why, but for some reason you can't. But other than that, it's very basic, very uh, nice looking software. You can rotate, of course, from zero degrees up to 270, 180, and then 270 degrees. So yeah, the software is basic, but it's very easy to use. You can rename as well information you can change it to something else now i wish you could actually configure this way you can move the uh the actual display part on the screen but you can't so yeah unfortunately that is one of them things but other than that the screen and the software is very easy to use okay so when it comes to the overall system specifications i am using my am5 platform it is a ryzen 9 7900 it's got 16 gigs of ddr5 from kingston it uh, is also with a b650 msi wi-fi motherboard it does have an rx 7800 xt it has a 1000 watt calling power supply and also it's housed in the b quiet chatterbase 800 fx with four 140 lightwing fans so when it comes to the overall testing, now I did two two different types of tests. I do my 50% and 100% fa uh, fan speed test. But first, the room temperature was 16 Celsius, but did go up by two, so went up by two, 18 Celsius after testing. So for 50% fan speed, the CPU power draw high was 167, with a low at 152. The CPU clocks were high at 5.4, with a low at 5.1. Well, about base clocks, you don't have to worry here. Now, the testing methods that I do use is Cinebench R23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3D Mark Super Test. Now, I will want to note that these were run for 20 minutes each time so that the liquid inside did have enough time to saturate. And these numbers aren't the highest numbers. These are the normalized testing results after the liquid has equalized. So... For Cinebench R23, the idles are 35 with a max of 85. Blender Pavilion, idles 35 with a max of 85. Blender Classroom, idles 35 with a max of 84. And 3D Mark, you test, idles 35 with a max of 75. So, for 100% fan speed, exactly the same test method. Now, when it comes to the CPU power, it was high at 164 watts with a low at 158 watts. And the CPU clocks didn't change. They were 5.1 at low and 5.4 at high so for cinebench r23 the idles were 35 with a max of 84 blender pavilion idles 35 with a max of 83 blender classroom idles 35 with a max of 83 and 3d mark cpu test the idles are 35 with a max of 72 celsius so what i'm going to do right here is put up a graph showing what or how this performs against other AIOs that I've reviewed with LCD displays. That means the ones from Thermalright and the ones from Deepcool. So, yeah, make sure you watch because this is where the results are going to show up right now. Okay, then. So, should you buy this AIO? Well, one thing that I'm going to say now, I'm going to give you my overall opinion. Now, the some of the, be uh, some of the best points are 
The screen is absolutely humongous. The fans, the overall noise, the pump, everything else there, it performs well, it looks good. I do like the overall screen. It's absolutely enormous screen, but then it's got obviously going to be cons. Now, I wish that they would allow the screen to be magnetic, but then again, this is the Aurora series from Gav Diaz, which is more their budget line, so I understand there. The software, it's good but it's not it can't it's not the best that it can be i think gamdias needs to do a little bit more fine tweaking to actually allow you guys to customize absolutely everything they should allow you to place anything on the screen without having to create like the overall uh you know the create a box on the screen they should allow you to just click and click and drag that that should be allowed now the price at this for the US is $110, which quite honestly is very comparable to what Thermarite does. They have some budget ones. The Frozen Warframe, for instance, is around, I believe, the $130, but it could be more. So this is around the £80 mark, which actually is very good for considering what you actually get. Now, whether you want to buy that or not, that's going to be completely up to you. I will try to uh, find links. But it's not available in the UK, so sorry, the UK. But other than that, it gets my recommendation, I think, for the overall price and what you're getting, it's a very good value AIO. So, yeah. Now, look, I am a Tech Max tomorrow. So Saturday's video will be about Tech Max. So hope you, hopefully, if any of you actually live in the UK and you are coming, make sure you see me because you will notice I'll have a massive dragon on my custom t-shirt for when I'm there. So, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got absolute tons of stuff coming here. I'm going to be starting adding Intel platform to the CPU and AIO cooler reviews. So make sure you subscribe. I've got loads of absolute tons of stuff coming. Motherboards, more coolers. You know what I'm like. I got absolute tons of stuff coming. So, yeah. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.